Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor for another Linux first impression. This one is again based upon a Slackware distribution. This one is called Frugalware. And this may be my last Slackware. I may, I'd like to try to move on to a different, uh, a different type of distribution. I've done a lot of Slackware based distros the last couple of weeks to a month and to be honest I'm kind of getting burned out with Slackware. It really isn't one of the most user friendly in my opinion distros. There's a lot of little things that you have to use. As one person put it, it's definitely a learning distribution which means that you gotta go in there, dig, and try to figure a lot of things out. Now on one hand I love Linux because I love to tinker, I love to get in there and I like to figure things out but on the other hand when I just want something to work I don't want to have to go in there and find packages all over the internet just to make a simple application run. It's one thing to troubleshoot how to make something cool like a mail server on Linux work or get OpenVPN to work on your Linux system. It's another thing just to get something simple like uh, GUVC or GUCV Viewer. As you'll notice, for instance, I am using Cheese for my uh, distro. I, I installed GUCV View, but for some reason it was kind of blotchy. I didn't like the the way it was looking, and Cheese seems to still give me a good frame rate to move on. I did go ahead and install the simple screen recorder. I find it gives me a very good file size. For instance, this is almost two minutes and we're only up to about a 50 megabyte file. Some of my others I've used, I'm getting 100 to 150 megs per minute, and that's a little, it makes for a very big file. One nice thing about Frugalware is it does have a package manager. If you go into the system, you have GFPM that you can start. And type in your administrator and it will pop up and much like some of the other programs that I installed in Slackle and Salix OS just to find packages this works just as well it's a little interesting I'm always looking for the top for a search bar the search is down here and for instance if you were looking for something something like the M player okay, search that out and it's going to give you everything you can find. As you can see, M player is already installed. The nice thing about this is if you click on it, it will show you the files. I find this very useful sometimes. If you're trying to figure out, for instance, where is a configuration file or a man file for something, you can go through here and see, for instance, all the user share doc M player. And it looks like it's got an HTML um, style help sheet that you can go through, probably find the index with and move on and be able to learn about it. Also it shows you to where the bin file is being put. I can hear user bin GM player and user bin M player. Those are helpful things to know if you're looking for where the actual application is and how you might be able to go about using it. Another neat feature about Frugalware is it also has an update manager that if you go into system and been a while so it, forgive me for searching through here but I know it's in here somewhere but I have a shortcut because I looked at it here Frugalware update notifier this is a nice feature because a lot of times you don't know when packages have been updated and I'm sure in Gen 2 there, there's some sort of an update notifier too if I was to install it I tend to every couple of weeks or so just do a synchronization of the portage tree and then check to see what world needs to be updated. But it is nice to have kind of a updater that yells at you every once in a while, reminds you to do it. Because sometimes I know I'll get kind of lackadaisical in that and a month will pass by, 45 days will pass by, I'll do a, a portage update on Gen 2 and then try to do a synchronization just to check to see what it is and I'll find I've got 200 plus packages that I need updating and that's a lot worse to do in Gen 2 when you're compiling everything from source than it is if you just keep up with it and have one or two packages here or there. Within Frugalware I also noticed it came with Firefox and we look in the internet area. 
Now, I always change the the uh, menu system here like this for my videos. It always comes with the other way. And if you know what you're looking for, the the other menu is much nicer. You can start typing it in and find it. I just find for showing you guys what's available and where what is, it's easier just to come into here. And we see that Firefox is the browser. It does come up. And I also noticed that if we went to uh, YouTube, for instance, that it will pop up as well. And then it seemed to work flawlessly really well. That's one nice thing. I love it when simple internet-based applications just work. And there it goes. And we will pause, and that's all we'll do with that. So, internet works well. It came with a good set of applications. You know, development, of course, just the bare minimum. But if we look in here for some of this other stuff, I don't want to take up too much time because I've had a couple of people say, yeah, every reviewer, they go through and they look at the menus and all they do is focus on what the default apps are. And I thought, oh, gee, you know, I guess I do a lot of that because, and, and, uh, and two, when I look at it, after a while, I start to realize it's the same apps over and over again. It's like I've said a couple times. And what you expect to see with XFCE, there you go. What you expect to see with KDE, there you go. Yeah, there's really nothing out of the ordinary. The big things to mention, for instance, is does it come with this? Does it come with that? This, for instance, has the GIMP. It's using LibreOffice over some of the others that have used... Um, Caligre, or I think OpenOffice is pretty much out the door. I don't think I've seen a distribution yet. I know I mention it every once in a while because I remember it being one of the very first major um, Office applications. Other than, you now I've even noticed KOffice doesn't get installed anymore. And I think it's still being developed for um, KDE. Just haven't seen it for a bit. See, if we go on through here, for instance, this is the internet area, and of course it always comes with you know, some sort of instant messenger. Uh, Conquer, of course, was on this, so it doesn't have the light flavor of the KDE applications. That was one thing that really surprised me. I think it was uh, Slackle that came with the light versions of a lot of KDE applications. And as I've said, I prefer when looking at a new OS for the first time to, to have everything it can offer up front because as a newbie or someone who's n just not familiar with Linux you really want to be able to look at everything and and have an opportunity to have it all in front of you to view review and find what works best for you and if you look in here for instance you've got dragon video player you've got caffeine media player you've got the M player You've got already NVLC down here and Enzyme. You've got four or five different media players to try out and see which one you like. And the nice thing about Linux and the choice that Linux gives you is that you, you can look and find out which application works best for you. Like I said here, I'm using Cheese instead of the GUCV viewer. Only because it seems to work better. It's good to know that if all I knew about was GUCV and it just isn't it wasn't working right it's good to know that I could use cheese I mean that's something I've known for before I think cheese though is a um, gnome application and just like using the simple screen recorder someone had mentioned that and that works really well because I was trying to find a better screen recorder because I was having very bad luck with um, FFmpeg and doing it straight from command line and I was having a difficult time too with record my desktop and some of the other ones and and I noticed Slackware is just not friendly at all with Kazam, which was a, another uh, screencasting tool. Now, someone did mention VLC, and I appreciate that because I didn't know you could do that. And I, it was one thing I did do some research, and I someone had mentioned in, in a blog that I was reading that you could use VLC, and I started looking into it. But I've got these others, and I will try VLC sometime and see how that works. But moving on with Frugalware, um, I did notice there were some problems right up front with setting up a few things. For instance, the background 
came, I thought, was just black. But what I found out was every time I would try to set the background, it would just go black. It would apply it, and as soon as I'd hit OK, it would go black again. So there are some problems with the video drivers, I noticed. It is using the um, open source NVIDIA drivers um, that are out there, and, and that works fine in the console. Uh, and maybe there's a problem with the, the way it's working inside of Xorg. But after a little bit of fiddling, those did come up and seem to work okay. I haven't had much problems with many of the applications. Everything pretty much runs well. I know some of the other Slackware-based distros, they had applications in here. I'd click on them. They'd flash for a while. If you've ever noticed that, they flash and flash and flash and nothing happens. Here's a good trick and, and tip. Whenever something like that just kind of flashes on the screen and you don't see any rhyme or reason or error that comes up as to why it won't start, open up a console, type that command in the console, and a lot of times it'll bring up the error inside the console as to what the problem is. Sometimes it can be a broken library and it's very simple, reinstall the library if the library has already been reinstalled, reinstall that application again so it will link itself. For instance, it could be that a library has been updated in the recent package updates and because of that the application was linking to the old version of the library and because there wasn't a new version of that application it's still pointing to version 1 dot blah or 2 dot this and the new one's 3 dot something. So by reinstalling that application, it will then look at the new libraries that have been updated and relink itself properly with that. At least that's what I find a lot of times in Gen 2 if I end up with that problem. But like I said, a real good tip. Whenever you can't find an app or you get an application that's doing that and you can't figure out why won't this start, open it up in the console. Check to see what the errors are. A lot of times you'll find out exactly what the error is inside that console and it pretty much will lead you to a solution to fix your Linux application. Very good knowledge to have. Let's see. I think also another cool thing about Frugalware was it gave me the opportunity to do a network install and with the network install it also allowed me to install GNOME, XFCE, KDE, all at once. That's another really neat feature because sometimes you don't know what graphic interface is going to work best for you. You might be really familiar with KDE, but they've done a much better job at building their GNOME interface. And so you install the KDE because it's what you're familiar with, and it's a eh, blah, blah, blah. But you go into their GNOME inter interface, and all of a sudden it's like, Wow, look at all these cool widgets and gadgets and gizmos and all that cool Bob stuff. You know, that's the neat stuff. You, you want to be able to check out that stuff. And, and a lot of times nowadays the distributions have gotten so big that you can only download the GNOME flavor of this and the KDE flavor of that and the XFCE flavor of the other. And you don't get a chance to try them side by side. Frugalware, with its network-based install, allowed me just to say, install all of it. And since I've got plenty of space, that's what I did. That's why, for instance, and I mentioned that, because under Utilities, you're going to see that it has the Thunar File Manager. It's also probably why Cheese is installed, because that's really a GNOME application. You know, And that's another, that's another thing that a lot of people don't understand. You don't have to have GNOME to run GNOME apps, KDE to run KDE apps. As long as the the back end libraries are installed, uh, whether that's GDK uh, for one, or which is GDK is the GNOME toolkit, or QD4, which is the main back end for for most KDE applications. You know, as long as you've got those installed in the back end, those applications should work in no matter what uh, GUI interface you've chosen. As I've said, I'm thinking that's pretty much going to be it for Slackware. I've had some requests to look at Magia and a few uh, 
I keep forgetting what they're what they're called nowadays. I mean, back when I used them, it was Mandrake, and I did use Mandrake for a little bit before they kind of went commercial. I know that there's still some open source projects out there that are based on the old Mandrake. So we're going to be taking a look at that, and maybe a few more Arch-based distributions. And speaking of Arch, while Frugalware is based off of Slackware, they are going out and making, I believe, what they call an Archware distribution pretty soon. Because that's the cool thing that I forgot to mention about this, is they're using a lot of Arch-based technology that they've rewritten to work in this environment with a Slackware-based distro. And they are making pretty soon an arch based distribution based on frugalware and utilizing some of the really cool unique tools that they've built so it's kind of like the best of both worlds there i wanted to mention that another nice feature before i go ahead and close for this one is it's nice that they bring up the frugalware directory right here and gives you a quick link to all of their developing areas documentation areas forums if you want to donate, etc. Their IRC web channels are great. Um, I'm trying to remember. This may be a French-based distribution of it. I don't recall off the top of my head um, if that is the case. That might be why that's in French, though. But it's nice that they have all of that right there at your fingertips. You can get right to their wikis to get answers. A lot of their applications have been developed straight for this particular um, distribution and so they've really kind of built a lot of great uh, support behind this. So as I always say, if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, enjoy it. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your comments. Keep them coming. Uh, next week we'll be looking at something new, and thank you again for watching. Until next time, have a good one. Bye.